Hi everybody, this is Miss Jenny from Lake County Public Library and welcome back to another book tasting. This book tasting is very special because this week is National Library Week. So for all of those of you who love your library, I've picked out a really exciting book. This is Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library by Chris Grabenstein and it's published by Random House. I chose to read chapter 11 to you today because this book features a really exciting imaginary library and I would love to read about it to you. But before we get started on chapter 11, I want to give you some background of what's going on in the story. So Mr. Lemoncello is a game maker. He makes games for kids and our main character Kyle Keeley is a big fan of Mr. Lemoncello and his games. Um, so Mr. Lemoncello then announces that he's going to build a library and Kyle is really excited because he wants to know if he's hidden any secrets in his library like he does in many of his board games. And the night before the library opens to the public, 12 kids are going to get a chance to stay overnight in the library before anyone else. And Kyle is one of those lucky winners. So. Let's get started on chapter 11 of Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library. Eager to see what was inside the new library, the 12 essay contest winners quickly gathered behind Dr. Zinchenko. This way, children, said the head librarian, follow me. The crowd cheered as they marched out of the ballroom, all toting their sleeping bags and suitcases. There was more cheering, plus some hooting and hollering, when they reached the hotel lobby and went out the revolving doors to the street. The new public library with its glistening dome took up half a downtown block, its back butting up against the old fashioned office tower. The building was a boxy fortress, three stories tall with stately columns that acted like bookends because the windowless walls had been painted to resemble a row of giant books lined up on a shelf. It's like a majestic Greek temple, gushed Miguel. And the world's biggest bookcase, added Sierra Russell, who had finally put away her backpack. Velvet ropes lined a path across Main Street that led to a red carpet, leading up a flight of steps to the arched entryway and seriously steel, not to mention round, front door. Kyle had to smile when he saw what was tethered to the railings on either side of the steps, balloons. A big bruiser, maybe 6'4", 250 pounds, in sunglasses and a black sports coat, stood in front of the library's circular, do circular door, which had several large valve wheels like you'd see on a submarine hatch. The burly guard wore his hair in long, ropey dreadlocks. What's with that door? asked Haley Daly, who, of course, had pushed her way to the front. It looks like it came from a bank vault or something. It's the door to the old gold leaf, gold leaf bank's walk-in vault, said Dr. Zinchenko. It weighs 20 tons. Akimi turned around and whispered, My dad designed the support structure for that thing. Check out the hinges. Kyle nodded. He was impressed. Why a vault door? Kayla Corson asked. Because, said Dr. Zinchenko, one sleepy Saturday when Mr. Lemoncello was your age, he was working in the old public library over on Market Street. He was so lost in his thoughts, he did not hear the, the sirens as police cars raced past the library to the bank where a burglar alarm had just been activated. The door serves as a reminder to all, our thoughts are safe when we're inside the library. Not even a bank robbery can disturb them. Miguel was nodding like crazy. He could relate. It also helps keep our most valuable treasures secure. There aren't any windows, observed Andrew Peckelman, probably to stop bank robbers from busting in. But shouldn't you have People have added the windows when you turned it into a library. A library doesn't need windows, Andrew. We have books, which are windows into the world we never even dreamed possible. An open book is an open mind, added Charles Chiltington. That's what I always say. 
Dr. Zinchenko pulled out a bright red note card. Before we enter, please listen carefully. Your library cards are keys to everything you will need, she read. The library staff is here to help you find whatever it is you're looking for. She smiled slightly, tucked the card back into her pocket, turned to the security guard and said, Clarence, will you do the honors? With pleasure, Dr. Z. Clarence turned one giant wheel, spun another and cranked a third. Noiselessly, the 20 ton door swung open. The first thing Kyle could see inside was a was a trickling fountain in a grand foyer of brilliant white marble. The fountain featured a life-size statue of Mr. Lemoncello standing on a lily pad in the middle of a shallow reflecting pool, 10 feet wide. His head was tilted back so water could spurt up from his mouth in an arc. Kyle noticed a quote chiseled into the statue's pedestal. Knowledge not shared remains unknown. Luigi L. Lemoncello. Beyond the fountain, through an arched walkway, was a huge room filled with desks. When everybody shuffled into the entrance hall, Dr. Zinchenko turned to the security guard. Clarence? Clarence hauled the heavy steel door shut. Kyle heard the whir of spinning wheels, the crank of grinding gears, and the reverberating clunk. Wow, said Miguel. Talk about a lock-in. I'll be in the control center, Dr. Z, said the security guard. Very well, Clarence. Clarence disappeared behind a red door. Now then, children, said the librarian, if you will all follow me into the rotunda reading room. As the rest of the group started filing into the gigantic circular room, Kyle checked out a display case behind, beside the red door. A sign over it read, Staff Picks Are Most Memorable Reads. A dozen books were lined up on four shelves. One cover in the middle of the bottom row caught Kyle's attention. It showed a football player wearing a number 19 jersey dropping back to hurl a pass. Kyle made a mental note of the title. In the pocket, Johnny, Unidas, and me. Tomorrow morning, when the lock-in was over, he might use his library card to check it out for his big brother, Mike. Wow, everybody gasped as they stepped into the rotunda reading room and looked up. The entire underside of the dome looked like space as seen from the Hubble telescope. A dusty spiral nebula billowed up. A galaxy of stars twinkled and meteoroids whizzed across the ceiling. Ooh, the space imagery on the ceiling dissolved into 10 distinct panels each one becoming a display of whirling graphics. Those are the 10 categories of the Dewey Decimal System, whispered Miguel, sounding awestruck. See the panel with Cleopatra, the guy, climb, the guy mountain climbing, and the Viking ship sailing across it? That's for 900 to 999, history and geography. Cool, said Kyle. Tucked beneath the 10 screens in the arched niches, were incredible 3D statues glowing a ghostly green. I believe those are holographic projections, said Andrew Peckelman, waving up at the statue that was waving down at him. The room under the dome was huge. It was circular with a round desk at the center that was surrounded by four rings of reading desks. Kyle saw that half of the rotunda was filled with floor-to-ceiling bookshelves. The other half had balconies on the second floor and third floors that reminded him of an open atrium of a hotel that he and his family had stayed at once. While everybody was gawking at the architecture, Dr. Zinchenko said the words Kyle had been waiting to hear all day. Now then, who's ready for our first game? Thanks for joining me, everyone. That was chapter 11 of Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library. I hope you pick up the book and read the whole thing because it's a really fun one and a great way to celebrate National Library Week. Thanks for joining me.